Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is your well, no. But... Well, that's all right. What we can do is we can get Ted Cruz to attend the inauguration ceremony and then take him out. Because as we all know, his father was involved in assassinating JFK, so obviously he comes from a long line <laughs> of political assassins. So problem Listen, solved. Listen, Andre, Andre, I have the documents. <laughs> It, it is slavery, it's just a different name. A lot of people don't realize what it is. And when we bring these ideas to light and make people realize, you know, that this government force uh, is, is the problem. Um, and, and to me, it's like, I, I, I say, imagine you're an abolitionist in the 19th century, and, and the, the slave masters are giving you the same exact argument. Who's going to pick the cotton? Hey! Seeds of Liberty, read the show's description, please. Fervently complete the course, report them to the infantry. infantry. Him. Deconstruct the fallacy. Season all production means it seems to spawn a tragedy. Peep the action, please. A fraction of the allegory. Corollary cadence is complaining on a sadder story. Menial. Recently reading into the thesis here. Mirroring the people who completely fail to see it though. Seeing is believing. Yes, the reason is appealing. Most reading in the music just enables you to see it too. Menial. Recently reading into the thesis here. Mirroring the people. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the seeds of liberty podcast this is episode 73 as always the seeds of liberty podcast is covered by the bipcot no government license this allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof you can find out more information about this at bipcot.org so this week we have our friend andre kira did I get that right this time? <laughs> We're closer than yeah, I usually Yeah, you got it right. <laughs> Andre Kira, you got it right, sir. There we go. Yay. Who is uh, a volunteerist and former Army Airborne, correct? That is correct, sir. Yes. So uh, Enforcer for the state. Yes. He yeah, for, basically. For, former bad man, but he has uh, since repented and is now... Uh, on the path to, to uh, goodness, yummy, yummy goodness. Uh, <laughs> uh, we've actually had Andre on before. He was on our, our New Year's Eve episode with uh, our buddy Merrick Van Landingham when both Dave and Danilo bail, bailed on me, and I said, you know what, I have no life, so I'm going to do a show, and I'm going to go find two people who also have no life. And uh, luckily, and I did. Grandmother's <laughs> cooking is too good, Jeremy. I can't pass it. I can't pass up my grandmother's cooking. You know. Well, we all have different levels of sacrifice for the uh, cause of liberty. Hey, sorry, Grandma. I can't come eat your delicious food. I'm, i got to go talk about anarchy with some guys from New York. That wouldn't have went over well. Priorities, David. Priorities. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you're right. I'll try. I'll try to check. It. I'll try to check. Check my adherence to religious ceremonials. There you go. So we're gonna. Uh, I don't know. Talk about a few things. Probably uh, get some updates from Andre since the last time we talked to him. And uh, I hear tell he's uh, in a conversation with uh, another. I guess ex military member who hopefully you're trying to convert. Is that the is that the gist I was getting from what you guys were talking about? Uh, yeah, sort of, kind of. I mean, it's less it's less that I'm trying to convert him and more. It just, he happened to comment on a post that I made on Facebook to which another dude who I don't really know why he friended me because he just went off on, like, this ridiculous rant tangent and told everybody to fuck off and then stormed out and unfriended me. But that got the conversation rolling because I still happen to be on the same side of the argument as the jackass that stormed off and unfriended me, so... <laughs> well, that's Facebook land for you. That's why I kind of... Dave and I were talking yeah, about... Yeah, not an enviable position. <laughs> yeah, D Dave and I were talking about that before you uh, hopped on with us, about how I've kind of... Well, I think both of us <laughs> just need a break from it because uh, it's very draining to deal with. I mean, obviously, you have if you, if you have managed to connect with somebody and uh, be able to have conversations, like you were saying, it started, it's good, but I don't know too much of the negativity has actually gotten to me which kind of leads me into what I, I did actually want to talk, talk about first before we got on to you you know it is my show we should talk about me first um. <laughs> yes sir <laughs> <laughs> no we're but it, talk it, about Jeremy it and actually, then we're going to talk about me and then we'll get to 
to our guest. Okay? It actually exactly. It actually it actually kind of ties in though about the whole needing to clean. What, how did you put it, Dave? You need to kind of cl- cleanse your consciousness. Was that? I think that was the phrase you used. Uh, I just I, I just said my consciousness needs a break from facebook yeah. it's just it's, it's i just no it's 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 i understand and like i said that's why it kind of ties in from where i was this past weekend i was at the uh midwest peace and liberty fest up in michigan which was a heck of a lot of fun and while i was there among other things i got to i finally got to try dmt for the first time and oh my goodness <laughs> the you like that huh well it was it was it was a wonderful experience but it was very I imagine so. It was. I finally understand what everybody's been talking about when they, most people I know that have done it, who kind of say it's kind of enlightening, but in a way it's really hard to describe. And now I understand yeah. why, because I just I have this almost like. Well, I've never been able to get my hands on it. I've only been able to hear other people describe it to me. You know, like in real life that have done it, and they all say it's it's pretty intense. It feels like you're gone for. A year but you're only out for about 10 20 minutes yeah i don't even think i was out for that long i was with a couple of people including some of our some of our friends from the scenes of liberty group who all, all got together up there and uh mm-hmm. i sat and watched everybody else do it and nobody was in it for longer than three or four minutes i was told i was in even longer but i don't i don't think so um, but it fe- it definitely felt like a very very long but it wasn't like a bad you know it wasn't a bad long time that is What's I'm that? pretty sure it's it's got a reverse tolerance. That and uh, salvia, I think, both have reverse tolerances to where if you like, the more you take them, the more your body can process it and use it. So it affects you more heavily. As you know, like the opposite, like heroin. You know, like you're never going to get the same effect as you know, like your first 10, 15 hits. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I have heard that too, and that would that would fit in with. I guess the experience our our friend Shane Buell, who we've had on the show a bunch of times, uh, was explaining to me because he used to do this stuff. I mean, he talks about this openly, so I don't think he would mind me talk, tell, re- retelling the story here. Uh, but he used to do it like regularly, and and f- for par- partially, you know, for other reasons too. But that that it had that benefit. Although he seemed to be have his mind totally blown by the stuff that we got up there, uh, which he said was much better than whatever he was doing beforehand. But it wasn't like I'm not I'm not trying to like glorify drugs here or anything, or you know, before any of our more conservative people who I do know listen because uh, I, I know some of them personally. <laughs> yeah. it's, it was just the fact, like I said, it's, it's kind of hard to describe at least you know what actually happened, but it was like almost... I, well, I don't would, think anyone ever advocates... Well, I, I normally do. I, I advocate that. never advocates it, you know? Well, I actually normally it's do. It's like, I, hey... I normally do. The, I advocate that. I don't, I don't... I'm not going to push it on anybody. I'm not going to force it on anybody, but I do advocate no, that everybody uh, well, well, I was trying to <laughs> say is they like never advocate it as like a recreational thing. It's like, hey, when you feel like you're ready, for this do it <laughs> well see that's what i'm saying i nor, regularly psychedelics in general just like you know lsd and and psilocybin i've always promoted those uh recreationally yeah now i have a different view on it but but like i said it, the, the the drugs aren't exactly the point it's just the the kind of feeling of my consciousness afterwards where i'm kind of like i was at peace for like really hardcore for the next day and a half with uh, uh, although a lot of other things in my life which I'm not really going to get into now were kind of collapsing around me <laughs> and uh, yeah. all of a sudden I just had this clarity of everything and I couldn't explain why it was just this sense of mm-hmm. kind of like calming and like I need to get back to that experience again at some point but in the meantime I feel that everything is I can deal with things a little bit easier and I'm also trying to walk away from uh Facebook for that reason because it's just just too much frustration. <laughs> the the bad tends to outweigh the yeah. good way too often for me personally. So I'm not like against Facebook 100%. Like I'm really not. Like I just need, you know, maybe half as much time as I spend on there. I need that going on and then maybe we can half it from there or make the time I use on there more efficient than just scrolling. Cuz I I have adopted a complete like the, I only use Facebook for propaganda like very rarely does actual real what's going on in my life actually leak out there. Yeah, and I'm about the same way. Really, I just rely on Facebook for the Seeds of Liberty group and then whoever I happen to be friends with that I've been friends with for a while. And so I'm just curious to see what they're doing and they usually post stuff that I actually care about. But other than that, like the the massive political crap storm that is going on there, I've tried to keep myself out of it pretty much 100 percent or as much as i can you know i can't really help people that i know posting you know stupid shit in support of 
Clinton or Trump or, you know, what have you. But if it's out there and they, you know, post it out there and they want people that they know to relate to it, I'll pitch in my two cents. And if I can try and spread the message that way, I'll do it. But other than that, I mean, I, I've pretty much d detached from Facebook, I'd say about 85% from what I was doing before. Well, that's good. I, I, well, that's it, for me. This is this is kind of a, a new experience, <laughs> at least. Oh uh, no, me too, man. Me uh, too. I used to spend all day on Facebook. Yeah, and I, I, yeah. I was, I was actually pretty much consistent with that. I think it was really up until I went to Porkfest a couple months ago, where I was forced to be off of it for the better part of the eight days I was up there because I didn't have internet service, and the, I could only get Wi-Fi, you know, sporadically throughout the day. So I basically was, you know, kind of forced to go cold turkey for a while. And God, the I when, when I came back, I was just like, it took me a couple of days to get into it. And then I didn't care anymore. And it was great. And now, like I said, since this, this more recent trip, again, I've got, I was, I had internet service, but I really didn't pay attention. Like I basically went on and gave like a scroll for like, I've just been so busy. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I ha I've been a little bit, you know, I'm a little more busy with other stuff too, but it's still like, for me, be, with my job, you know, with the, with the way I run my business, it's, you know, it was perfectly set up for me to play on Facebook and smoke cannabis all day from the very beginning. That's what, <laughs> and that was before I was even on Facebook. Yeah. That's just the way they, that's just the way my, my, my kind of business is designed where if I want to do those things, yeah. as long as I, as long as it's not during the day when I'm driving. I can just do that pretty much whenever and still do my job perfectly well. So <laughs> mm -hmm. it was, it was, it was always, I, I've never had that issue. And especially now that the, you know, the kids are only here a little less than half the time. I have even more time to do that. And I've just become so accustomed to being on there, but it's been so nice. And like I said, since this more recent trip, it's, I have even more of a desire to not go back. I just, I know I have to, to a certain extent, only because that's where I can get a majority of my content for, for the shows that we do, you know, for the shows that we do here. Are um, you still anti-steam it? Yeah. Uh, I haven't bothered to, to really deal with it at all since I said my piece on it a week or so ago, whenever that was. Well, I mean, I know I said it, I think, a couple of times on the on the fiends, but I... I just, I, I still, like I said, like, I'm still kind of poking it with a 10-foot pole. You know, like, poking it. Like, I want to see where it goes, but I, it's so far so good. It, I have heard no one complaining about it. You've heard no one well, complaining I mean, I've about heard, it? I've heard a ton <laughs> of people complaining about it. You, but, I mean, from my personal experience, well, I, I, mean, I didn't risk anything going into it, and it, I've met some really cool people there. You know, particularly in the fiction writing community, but also like in terms of volunteerism and you know anarchism and all the rest of this good stuff that we like to talk about all the time. There's a ton of good content out there. It does require a little bit of looking, you know, most of the time, or at least it does for me, because <coughs> I'm not mm -hmm. bot savvy, so I can't, you know, write a program that finds my crap and collates it for me. But I mean, there is a lot of good stuff out there, and I've not, I've had only positive experiences with it. Let me put it that way. Well, I mean, I, I, I haven't, I honestly haven't even dealt with it at all because I haven't bothered to go to even look at it. Only, and again, it's just I'm not telling people not to or whatever. And I understand. And I yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, you're you're right. I am. <laughs> don't go there. Um, no, I mean. No, it, I mean, I don't. I don't think you've outright said don't support this. You know, I think or or, or you know. I refuse to be friends with anyone that supports it. You just said I, you know, I don't support it. Yeah, I'm not. And I was just wondering if well, you were still holding that stance. Well, yeah. Well, well, because again, it's just it's funny that you said you haven't heard anybody <laughs> say anything bad about it because that's confirmation bias right there. There's there's a ton of people talking on both sides about this, and you know, first it was the people, including people that were highly respected for in this type of area, that you know read the white paper. And we're kind of like, what the heck is all this crap about? Like, this doesn't make none. Of, a lot of this doesn't make sense. And mm -hmm. you know, we had Jeff Berwick on here a couple of weeks ago, who obviously is a big proponent of it. And he was say, he was supposed to have a debate with that the one guy. What's his name? I forget the guy's name. But who he's actually friends with? Who I, I think I think it was Daryl uh, W. Perry, or maybe or maybe Ian. It was someone sabotage, kind of sabot, no, kind of sabotage. He, he was on he was on Free Talk Live. And they kind of set him up with talking about his friend, and he kept going, "Oh yeah, I love that guy. He's great." And they're like, and then they told him that he he thought Steam was a big pile of crap, and he was just like, "Oh, 
<laughs> and he was supposed to debate him later on. I don't actually know what happened with that. But it started with that, and then there's been more and more people that have who have dug into this and said it it has all the earmarks of a of a at the very least a pump and dump scheme because there's you know anywhere between 30 and I think the highest number I've seen was 87% of the coins were actually pre-mined. That's like when somebody's doing that, they're setting that up to 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 wait till it gets to a certain number, cash out, and then and then bolt. So it's not the platform of steam it that I necessarily have a problem with. Well, the argument that it, they would make back is that 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 the the coin would be in huge demand that people you know as long as they're voluntarily trading the. The stuff okay, but, it, but, it, but but again, in 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 the I've only started to learn about the crypto about the crypto community largely because of the the Bitcoin that was launched by Michael W. Dean and and the uh, the guys at uh, Bipcot, uh, which they have now since shut down because they had to admit they didn't have the manpower to keep it going. But you learn a lot when you get involved on the ground floor of that, and there's like there's like this unwritten rule that anything more than ten percent, I think, of a pre mine is uh starting to get sketchy so you're talking mm -hmm. about something that's anywhere between 30 and 87 yeah. percent like i said was the high number i, think, I heard what, satoshi nakamoto only did 20 percent right he only did 20 percent of the bitcoin ever i don't even think it was that much i don't think it, i don't i, I think, think bitcoin so. i think bitcoin I think was, it was 20 i, I could be wrong i thought bitcoin was only pre-mined to 10 and even if it was i think it was announced i think that's the other thing when you do it when you do it yeah. without announcing it and it's just a certain select people oh so steam it never announced that I, yeah as, as, as a lot there's a lot of evidence that seems to point to that that they did they did a, they announced wow. it but they the code that they put out that they put for everybody to uh to say here here you go here's here's your wallets here's your miners go for it there was an error in the code that didn't allow anybody to actually mine it for days. And when it was pointed out to them, I think the story is that they dodged it for a day or two, and then we finally said it. They said, oh, we're really sorry, and they sent on another one, which also had one, like it was one letter off in the sequence, which threw everything off. And again, it's just like, it's all of this circumstantial evidence that really seems to add up to every other pump and dump scheme that's uh, that's been a try through the, <laughs> through the cryptocurrency years so which i which i would totally i mean and i do understand that concern like i i do because i've had to learn more about cryptocurrencies as i've gotten involved in steam it and gotten more interested in the the whole the whole culture but at the end of the day unless you're investing money in it unless you're actually taking funds that you have and then putting them into steam it you're still not risking anything which I mean, I haven't. Well, so. that's not entirely true, though, because if you're unless unless you are putting out content in other arenas and simply sharing that same content to Steam it, which a lot of people I know, especially the people who got on because of the bigger names who seem to be having a ton of success right off the bat, and it really still is only a certain number of people who are actually still having success. <laughs> No, oh no, you're you're 100 percent right. I um I'm the squarely in the second group. A lot, yeah, and a a lot of people, and I'm not saying you are. I mean, I I, I don't know your exact your exact situation. We can get into that a little bit if you want. But a lot of people that no. I know started producing content specifically for Steam it. So you are investing time and and putting you know because again, unless you're extending this through other through other avenues too. If you're doing it just for this medium, then yeah, you're actually you are you are actually wasting a value of the most valuable resource your time you know so that's yeah, the, that's why i've actually stopped uh we're going to try to put the the uh, the way to put blogs on uh the actual seeds delivery website so the stuff can be shared from there so we get more traffic to the seeds so we can start maybe getting advertisers and stuff well, the, yeah, that I mean, that that type of thing, sure, obviously would would be more beneficial. But I'm just saying, for anybody in general, even if you don't have a website or or web or a Facebook page or whatever, just in general, if, I mean, if if you are like, because there's some people that write one article or or do one blog or whatever, and then they post it everywhere. Like that's one that's one thing. If you if if Steam it just becomes another avenue for you to to another place for you to dump your content. 
then by all means, I, 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 can't, I can't find a hole in the reasoning there. You aren't really wasting any. All you're wasting is the extra 10 seconds or whatever it takes you to actually you know, post it there as well. But like I said, a lot of yeah. people I've encountered were people who were just like, they saw this as an opportunity. And of course, I kind of got excited about the idea of it first. That's why I said the, the platform, the idea of it, I'm not against. I think it's if it's done, quote unquote, correctly. I can see no, you know, I would I would wish it success, and I may actually get involved in it. But with all these other problems yeah, behind it. Yeah, the free line it, coins is, the, the that is kind of, that's very, that's like an eyebrow raise, you know, when you hear something like that. Oh, like, uh, before anybody got a shot, 80 plus percent well, of like all said, the coins are now monopolized. Well, like I said, that that's the high yeah. estimate I've heard. I've heard there's numbers coming in from a lot of different places, and I've heard anywhere from 30 to 87, but I think the most consistent numbers I've heard is somewhere between 50 and 60, which is still, if nobody else was allowed to be part of that pre-mine because of the quote-unquote mistake. With the, with the information they put out on, on how to do so, then it's it's sketchy is like the, is is like an understatement at that point. So that and because I just because well, isn't isn't at like least, like I, I said I'm I'm taking that latter stance like you are I'm you know I'm using this as a content distribution you know avenue, and if yeah, I make extra money on it or I can get more people to see our content, that's all I want from it. I don't. Well, again, again, like I said, if it, if it, if you're just sharing, if you're sharing content, then that's fine. But if if you're doing it exclusively for, for Steam, it you could be wasting, especially if all this stuff comes to pass. Because that's the other thing. I think I recall. I think I recall hearing Jared say, J- our friend Jared Howe, say this on one of the episodes of the Downfall that you guys did. Because I'm trying to think, he hasn't been on here in a little while, so it must have been there. But I, I recall him saying something about the fact that like there's a, you have to like wait at least a year for the actual payout. Or something along those That's lines. To convert steam power to, into to, steam, and then which you can, can then be traded into Bitcoin. It, it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, into Bitcoin. So that also, with this other information, becomes a huge red flag. But it's flag. not like they hold it for a year, right? It's not like they hold it for a year and then they pay you out. They pay. They break up your how much you ask out for into twelve payments throughout the year. Just so it doesn't shock the economy, essentially. Oh, so you do just get so a payout. A well, so you do get. So that's that's conflicting. Yeah, you, well, you, you get, get a payout, payout every week. Month. No, you get a payout every yeah. week. It's in it's in uh, 104 payouts. So they break it up over two years with a payout every week. Ah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, like I said, that's. Yeah. <laughs> that's There's it. all these economic protectionisms in there for people like to st- stabilize essentially how much coin can flow in and out of the system. Well, yeah, and again, when you match that up with the fact that there's all this other stuff that's controlled by the very small minority, <laughs> and now they're on top of that, they're they're helping, you know, yeah, it's, it's protectionism for who? <laughs> I, I think a bunch of these websites, just like Steemit, are going to pop up. They're going to add new. new well, again, new, that, um, that's again yeah. that that that's not a problem because that that would be a that would be a market demand then. And I have, I, I don't yeah, have. I, I think if, if any, especially if anyone smells any kind of, you know, that dead fish smell in the water when it comes to a site. I mean, we, everyone has a good feel. You know, we all got on Sue for a few weeks and we're like, whoa, this is kind of bullshit. Yes, but nobody, all, <laughs> nobody got the, nobody got the giant payout thrust into the spotlight, automatic spokesman by default, Je- Jeff Berwick style with Sue, that happened here with Steemit. Well. Well, Sue, Sue well, Jeff, you got, Jeff, Sue, Jeff Berwick was the one of the first people in our, our echo sphere I, I, to get it for no, sure. I, but yeah, I know, but that's but what I'm saying. There's been people that make way more than on there. I'm sure, but again, it's only a few select people yeah, that were that were always hand interesting selected. when someone just. Uh, it always interest. It is always interesting when someone just out of nowhere gets it. Like, I mean, gets all this attention for content just you know for saying hi it is i mean it all it is going to raise red flags no matter what like the first time you see anything these days you're oh this is some bullshit and that's just human nature at this point well Well, either way i mean like i said i don't have that much invested in it you know specifically aside from some of my time like some of my fiction stories i haven't copied elsewhere but that's just because i made them up on the spot so it's not Mm mm-hmm you know, uh, that's whatever. But the most of the rest of the content, with the glaring ex- exception of, you know, one of my series on there, that's stuff that I put out elsewhere. So, 
but yeah, it's like you said. If you if, if this is just another uh, like source for you or the, another conduit for you to put out information, as long as you're not risk like actually risking, you know, an investment into it, hey, why not go for it? That's what I'm in there for. Yeah, uh, like I said, that's you know I'm I can't, I can't find fault with that. So that's that's. Uh, but again, for the other factors is the reason to, I just don't personally deal with it. But then again, it, uh, that so, also kind of ties into what we were talking about before about you know the at least for Dave and I need or we we're talking about needing that break from uh, social media in general. Yeah. I don't yeah. even I don't I I haven't even produced I haven't been producing any content other than what I do on the radio and what I do here for the last couple of weeks now. I, I haven't even made a meme I think in like at least a week and a half two weeks. I just you sir are yeah, horribly a lazy. break from it. I, yeah, I just I've I've got other stuff going on. I'm trying you know I've talked about it before. I'm still trying to work out things with my ex and hope. Hopefully, uh, get moved out of New York within the next year. So, oh, that'd be a great idea. Things have th- th- things have things have actually become you know important in life, and I re- I have to adult really hard again. <laughs> um, normally, I, I well, only I mean, have, take care of yourself first, right? No, no, well, yeah, but normally I only have to adult kind of when my kids are here. Well, I mean, I have to adult, but you know, they're they can adult for themselves a little bit. They're getting they're getting kind of independent. <laughs> Show concern for another life other than yourself is what you mean. I, well, no, show, showing concern is not an issue. I'm always concerned for my kids. It's just wanting to adult. <laughs> I don't like to yeah. adult in my I, own I, life. I, got you. I do what I have to do. But now, I, you know, so I, my focus is just not. And like I said, I don't, if I'm not there, I'm not getting other content to, pr- to help produce my own content. Because that's where I get my info. Right. That's where I get a lot of my. I mean, I don't get my news from Facebook, but I essentially do because those were those were where I read. I get the headlines for stories from websites that I normally go to, but I just don't bother to check regularly. And I'll find them on other people's. You know, other people will post them. I'm like, okay, okay, and now I'll read it because it's right in front of my face. So I do essentially like inadvertently get a lot of my stuff from there. So if I'm not doing that, I'm not actually paying attention to anything other than what I see in front of me every day because I don't watch I don't have I don't have cable at, I don't have you know I don't have TV at all so I don't watch I don't want I don't even watch the crappy news that's around here that's the only oh, it, it, it could be a I, good I thing to step away report probably a thousand times a day it feels still? like still why drudge man it, well okay do you want me to tell you why drudge is because well, the most drudge, up to date so. worldwide news is on the headline of drudge it is it just is it has this slant on it, so you have to understand. I'm looking at this through Matt Judge's slant, and you accept that, but you know this is the most up-to-date news, and I like to go where the most up-to-date news is, and it's unfortunately the Drudge Report. Well, I guess that's yeah. He he probably is. Well, he he definitely has more. He has economic regularly. incentives to make everyone want to go to his site to get it there first. Well, no, so, I I understand that because I was gonna say he has even if he definitely puts out more breaking news than even uh, the AP or Reuters does. So or even b- behind the curtain news. You know cuz he's past is. mainstream, man. He's the number Well, you know what I'm saying like uh just uh, uh deep state news like stuff that doesn't get put out on CNN, Fox or MSNBC or any of the newspapers, you know like Oh, well, no, he has no obviously he has like he has more stuff like that cuz yeah, he, well, he's like I, I guess a tea party esque guy, right? He's not he he's not like an admitted libertarian I or anything. I think he's more of like just uh I think he's just uh like a Reagan conservative. Like if Reagan was still president, he would be I think of just a peachy keen mother lover. <laughs> <laughs> well, that well, that's I guess the original tea party was actually that crowd. So there you go. Well, you know, and it's so stupid. I want anyone that like has a favorable opinion about Reagan. Uh, Prof. CJ has an episode about Reagan, and uh, at the end of it, you'll basically come to this summation that Jimmy Carter was the more limited government president. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Oh, yeah, that's actually that's that's one of those things that got get, that got uh, revisionist history put on it right away, where they cha- where they changed that yeah. thing, and, and Carter. I mean, Carter was a boob. Um, to a certain extent, but well, the Fed wrecked his his presidency. You know, they wrecked. They p- basically pinned those four years on him. Yeah, because if you know the what, what, how the Fed changed their policies during the 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 uh, Carter years, they jacked the uh, rates way up, uh, and you know, no one could get money. Uh, and you know, when no one can get money, people start saving money, and because it makes more money, and then everyone gets more money because they have more money saved up. 
And then when the Fed starts printing more money and raising inflation, people have no incentive to save their money, and that's where we're at now. So Trump or Hillary or whoever wins is going to be the next Jimmy Carter. The Fed is going to have to raise interest rates or they're going to collapse. I hope it's the second one. It probably won't be, but I Well, hope. you think about what happened when Reagan got in, right? Reagan got in, and it was like, hey, let's just sign off on, like, the most war spending ever. And so you actually had, like, America just attempted to out-commie the commies. Yeah. And when you know who exactly owns right. the Bank of Russia and who owns the Fed, you know it's all just a big joke to spend more money on militaries to control other people around the world. The, yeah, and, that, and, and that's that's another funny... Uh, well, and the other thing, of course, that Reagan did was... Which is funny, all the people, the conservatives and the Reagan the Reaganites and the Reagan lovers who would chastise Obama for, for going against all the things he ran on. Wasn't Reagan's big thing running on, you know, getting rid of the Department of Education that, Department Carter, of Education. that Carter had just started? And not only did he not get rid of it, but they strengthened it and gave it even more money. 80%. Oh, yeah. But yeah. that's none of my business. Yeah, he promised to end <laughs> the program. End the program. By the end of his eight years, uh, spending on the Department of Education went up 80%. You see, when you live in a communist country like the United States of America, it's best that they you know, control the minds of the children. Well, of course. If you give, you know, if you invest, what, 12, 15 years of indoctrination into somebody, it's pretty damn hard to break people free of that. I mean, hell, we've we've all experienced it firsthand on Facebook and other outlets. It just the uh, the vitriol comes spilling out the minute you start having these people try and even attempt to question these foundational How dare beliefs you that were drilled into my God, heads. Andre. I know. Yeah, but when but I mean, I can even I can just look. I don't even have to look there. I can just look back at myself four or five years ago. Oh yeah, and, no, me too. And, all of us, I'm sure. And I was, uh, I, I know that, you know, I, th I know that thought process. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. no, I was I, right it was, there with It's you. a logic game with me. Like, if someone would have told me, like, "Hey, anarchy is the only way," a few years ago, I would have been like, "Yeah, I don't know, I don't think so, bud." Like, power vacuums and stuff. But I never really actually heard any of the anarchist arguments. And then when I actually read them, there was no, there was really no cogdis at all it was more like holy shit i can't break any of these arguments well that's always been my thing well, as long as you're right i'm not gonna like i want to be right as well <laughs> well everybody everybody wants to be right <laughs> um yeah but yeah it's it's i i'm that it was the same way for me too i'm not i'm not saying that it wasn't a logic thing i'm just saying because you don't because the people that you guys were describing and then i'm just you know i'm i'm pointing to myself as that same as that same person years ago you don't want to hear the arguments even if they're presented to you. So it's, it has nothing to do with the, the arguments. You're just reacting. It's not until, like yeah. you said, you actually sit down and examine the arguments. Because I was the same way. When my buddy Nolan, when I first met him, the first conversation we had, he was the first person who used the term voluntarism with me. And I you know, asked him about it a little bit and he gave me a little bit of information. And I walked away from it and actually said to him, and, you know, that sounds like a great idea. But let's just get back to the Constitution first, and let's see what happens after that. <laughs> but again, it was yeah. because he didn't really present too many of the arguments. He just gave me the outline, and I reacted based on where I was at the t at the time, where I was still basically a constitutionalist, and I was mm -hmm. I had just found libertarianism like not even a year before that. And I still didn't fully understand it. I still hadn't really got like I, I found the Libertarian Party. I should say I didn't find I didn't really find libertarianism. I found the Libertarian Party because I didn't really hear about and and really have to examine what the NAP, the non-aggression principle was w even was. I don't think Gary Johnson has done that either. I, exactly. Oh, Probably the NAP, not. the NAP, no. the NAP is great. Of course, I love the NAP. When it comes to the Constitution, well, that's over my head. That's Mr. Johnson's stance on the NAP, from what I recall from the debate. <laughs> no, no, you had it opposite. You know, I agree with the Constitution. The NAP is a little over my head. No, no, no. He, no, he said no because he talked about. I remember. I recall that he talked about liking the NAP, understanding he could. When it comes to the, to the NAP and the Constitution, the two of them together, it's over his head. That's what he said. He, oh yeah, he was no, basically yeah, saying. I was agree with that statement. Actually, he was basically saying, yeah. Well, he was basically saying he, yeah. He inadvertently got it right, but for the wrong reasons. 
Yeah. Because they're not... Con- you no, can't, you I mean, can't, maybe that you was a sal- shallow way of saying it. No. I don't know. You always want to believe that, like, these people are undercover and caps, like, that are just going to fuck it all, like, you know, <laughs> Gary Johnson. But it, it's I, I just don't see it in his eyes, man. I just see somebody who... Screw his, I don't uh, know, screw his man, eyes. Look at his wants look, power. Screw his eyes. Look at his his a record as governor. Yeah, he did something. He something's. can't articulate one libertarian ideal. He can't. He's not a bloody libertarian. Yeah. He's he, not even he's not yeah. even he's not even a phobertarian. He's not even one of the libertarian party guys that kind of almost no, get it. He's just like a left-wing Republican. Yeah, he's yeah exactly. He's he's that's he's well no yeah what is he? He's probably like well he, he he's, he's one of the Ra- he's one of the people, Reagan he was think, probably one of the Reagan Democrats back in the day. That's probably who yeah. he is. That's that's actually I haven't a looked into his deep, um, right you know. uh, right yeah that's that's you know one of the one of the guys who's mostly leftist but like what Reagan said because they actually because they hear about free markets and then it kind of makes sense to them. But so, they don't understand how it makes well, sense. Well, I mean so maybe, well, of course maybe, well, yeah. Maybe Gary John like I don't know what's going to happen. Of course, with this election, I I think Trump's going to win in a monster landslide. And I'll you know what I'll debate that with anybody they want. Um, but I just see Gary Johnson and Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden if they replace Clinton with Biden. I just don't see them preaching essentially economic fascism. And Trump <laughs> is up there just literally the playbook of economic fascism, and people are eating it up. And, you know, that's why he's getting all these Hitler, uh, you know, comparisons. But to be honest, you know, a thousand guys have played this same trick. You know, it's not just Hitler. Well, no. Well, that's all right. What we can do is we can get Ted Cruz to attend the inauguration ceremony and then take him out. Because as we all know, his father was involved in assassinating JFK. So obviously he comes from a long line <laughs> of political assassins. So problem Listen, solved. Listen, Andre, Andre, I have the documents. <laughs> problem solved. There we go. And if, like you were saying, uh, what was the other day, if Trump is a time traveler, then he'll just, you know, dodge the bullets and then he'll expose himself. So there you go. He has to die then. Oh, let's not get into Trump as a time traveler. <laughs> I don't think anyone's ready for that that conspiracy yet. What? Oh my! You know, what have you? What have you been okay, smoking, Dave? The the basis of this conspiracy is that Donald Trump's grandfather was the CIA scientist, one of the scientists working for the CIA, who got control of, and was the head of the team that had to break down and decipher all of Nikola Tesla's work after he died. And that, you know, if you look at Donald Trump's, you know, like what his, what minute, he was going to do, wait, wait, hold and on, hold he just on, became hold. a billionaire out of nowhere. Before you, before you go further, is that true? Trump's grandfather really was on that? I looked it up. I couldn't find anything reputing it. Like his dad was definitely a government scientist for special ops. So His grandfather, okay. Yeah, like not his, his dad. His dad's dad. Yeah, and then his dad. His dad was he. He got money from his dad. His dad was rich. How? Mm-hmm. How was his dad rich? I forget that story. I uh, don't actually know how his dad is actually rich. It might be property managers men as well. Uh, that's usually. Yeah, I think that's I think what, so. you know. That's, that's how Trump's got his correctly. money. Property management. Yeah, but whatever money his father gave him. But if him, you look at just some of the the moves Trump has made, they're really kind of insane. Like he always is one step ahead of everybody. And he knows exactly what to say to keep the spotlight on him and he makes all these predictions like a day later it happens and you're just like, well, but the conspiracy is is that uh, you know, it, within Nikola Tesla's stuff, time travel is in there and his Donald Trump's dad ran off with the stuff and hit it, and <laughs> Donald Trump is like a Manchurian candidate. <laughs> you know, um, sit back in time to win the. Yeah, it's a conspiracy. You gotta, you have to entertain a few things. Obviously. <laughs> well, first, of course, first and that's foremost, the time travel actually exists. Well, I mean, I don't think time travel. I mean, there's no proof of it, right? Or at least that I can see. So. Well, whether whether or not time even exists is a whole other argument we could get into. But I don't well, think, exactly. I don't without space, there's no time. Without time, there's no space. I mean, it's kind of crazy stuff. So, Andre, what's your science fantasy that you've been writing up? This libertarian sci-fi stuff you've been writing up. I I, I read a little bit of one, but I've been so overwhelmed with just all the content people send me. Hey, check this out. And it's just like ah. 
Well, it's a good thing I don't actually send you anything then. <laughs> yeah, don't bother Dave with <laughs> yeah. don't bother Dave with your stuff. He's... No, it's, no, no, no. Um, I just it's don't actually have time. It's uh... <laughs> no, <laughs> it does, don't worry about it, man. We we all have stuff that we got to take care of. I mean, hell, all of our plates are stuffed full with crap, and you guys more than most people have a ton of stuff to go through. So. But, uh, no, as far as the story goes, uh, it's actually something I was writing up with my uh, ex-military buddy who I was having a conversation with earlier. Um, we had gotten together because I, I mean, I've been a writer for a while, an amateur writer. That's my strength is in writing and he Mm -hmm. does fantastic artwork. He's really into, we're both really into comic books and he's more on the art side. I'm more on the, the writing and plot design side of it. And so he asked if he, if I wanted to get together with him to develop a sci sci sci-fi graphic novel. And so I said, yeah, sure. Of course. Like why, why wouldn't I, I would love to have my name on the cover of a, a comic book, a science fiction epic. Yeah, right. Awesome. <laughs> like who wouldn't? Yeah. So we got together. We made some ideas. He like he got out of the army a little bit before I did, and he, we never really got it off the ground because he got a job. You know, he got a job working full time. He's a daughter who's a little bit younger than mine, uh, so he's got a ton of stuff on his plate, and he doesn't really have time to do the art. Art, unlike well, I mean, writing is very time intensive, but artwork is doubly so so he didn't he didn't ever have the time to actually go through and develop you know frames and pages and stuff so i was talking to him a while back and i asked him well would you mind terribly if i adapted what we have and what we've developed so far and turned it into a book or you know a series of books he said yeah sure no problem and i'd kind of filed that in the back of my head for a while and then I joined on Steam it, and I ran into uh, like a writing competition called Descriptions on the Spot. And basically, all that is is there's you know there's words, user submitted words or phrases, or photographs in the comments, and you basically take one, tag it with descriptions on the spot, and then you write a short fiction piece based on that. And one of the words ended up being Solaris. And I wrote a piece. Uh, I got a lot of really good feedback. I mean, the article didn't make me anything, whatever. It's not really what I'm there for. But I got a r- lot of really positive feedback from some people that uh, really encouraged me to push forward with it. So I took what I wrote there and kind of adapted it to the universe that I already had started to build. And I just kind of built on mm-hmm. that. Uh, it's not... It's not liber- Well, I mean, it is libertarian because the, the guy's... The main characters generally are not, they, they're anarchists, but not in name, I guess, would be the best way to put it. They kind of just operate outside of the bounds of the law as much as they can, because they really don't want to get involved with it. And I am planning on having a couple of instances where, because part of the uh, the universe actually has a whole segment of the galaxy that was colonized by the United Terran Systems, which is basically the interstellar earth government and they were pretty much abandoned because they were way way out into the frontier space and so they were ended up being cut off and what they ended up doing was coming together you know individually with each other systems and people and providing for their own defense but not allying themselves with any government entity so they exist as sort of like a a weird free space in the galaxy even though they're surrounded by pirates so that's that's going to be part of it, and I'm actually really excited to write about that because that I think that is going to be a lot badass. of fun. Yeah, man, that sounds that sounds pretty cool. I may uh, well, I, 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 then we I, get it made into an anime. <laughs> well, that would be awesome because I love anime, and that would be and then probably we could do the feather in my Andre. cap. I'm I'm pretty sure I could just die happily then. Like I wouldn't need anything more. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a fan of anime like Dave is, but I'll, I'll have to give your stuff a read because I, I, it's been so long since I've read any, any fiction. I think. Yeah, gosh. It's Except for the U.S. Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Well, it's been a while since I've read that whole document too. Thankfully, but I have. No, it's been. It's probably been at least five. At least five years now. Yeah, four or five years since I really read any fiction because I've been reading nothing but history, economics, philosophy, other anarchist and libertarian <laughs> works and articles and, pe- and books and stuff like that. and uh, Or 
you know, like other other stuff that's not. I can't I even. I can't even think of it. Um, other books, just any <laughs> any other books that I've read. Nothing's been fiction. It's been so long. So maybe I'll maybe I'll give you a stuff read and that'll get me back into that. Well, you know, if it provides any incentive, uh, the por- the chapters four, five, and six probably because it's probably going to take three chapters to write. My chapters aren't very long. That's I'm trying to break it up to where it doesn't take forever to read one post because I I know I don't particularly enjoy reading blocks of text at a time. But chapters yeah, four, five, like and six leaked government files for me to want to read stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And even then, sometimes it, it takes a minute. But chapters 4, 5, and 6, which are going to be the initial point of conflict, which send the heroes of the story kind of out into space, you know, trying to avoid government authorities even more than they already are, uh, is going to involve, uh, you know, government mishandling of something that angers another government and causes all sorts of chaos. So I think you, you guys might get a kick out of that too just because of the way it's going to be set up. Oh, it'll be just, mm-hmm. just like the real world. Awesome. Hey, yeah, <laughs> exactly, you know. <laughs> Unintended consequences. Mm. Well, no, that's great, man. I, uh, I, I, I applaud anybody who can uh, actually you know put forth that effort because i i've i've always had a I, at least i've always been told i have a knack for writing i just get so lazy with it i mean i've talked on here before about an article i've been meaning to write for like two years now i finally started it like a month ago got through like the first two or three paragraphs it's going to be a decent sized article um uh, maybe even more like an essay when i'm done with it but the but i i still i i left it alone haven't even got back to it so you know the fact that you said the, the fact I that i have a few of them like that yeah well the the fact that you you know you have you have a knack for it and you uh you know you like you said that's kind of what you're what you're good at so definitely if that's what you can do to like you said it's not there even if they're anarchists but not name if there's ways you can find to work stuff like that into the stories and it gets out there and it's especially stuff like sci-fi for instance stuff like that will reach people a completely different audience that may never get these this information or these ideas oh well, allegorical Allegorical propaganda is so much more effective than outright. Oh just God, yes. Propaganda. God, yes. Absolutely, it is. Yeah, exactly. And there's not. I don't. I think I know of a couple other people doing stuff like that, but for the most part, that's not a very oversaturated market from our. I mean, I don't know I don't whose think. worldview hasn't been shaped by the Lord of the Rings, but I know mine has. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess to some extent. I mean, I gosh, I I first read that here that whole the trilogy and the and the hobbit too like 30 at least almost 30 years ago yeah because i was like nine or yeah. ten, nine no 10 maybe 12 somewhere between 10 and 12 so it's been like yeah 28 years or so uh the first time i read that i've actually read that entire but but i didn't understand it on the level that i do now until the last mm-hmm. time i read it which was three years ago or so after i had already started coming to these ideas before that so I had read it a bunch of times, didn't see all this stuff in it. I couldn't I guess not I guess not everybody, even people who do get this information will actually understand it. <laughs> that's why well, that's yeah, why it took I me so that long. I can yeah. use that as some sort of conduit and if I do manage to get the message across, I will feel fortunate <clears throat> that I have accomplished something. Whether or not my writing is any good is <clears throat> kinda of remains to be seen, but I'll let you guys be the judge of that. So far, I've had some positive feedback, so I'm encouraged. Well, that's no, that's great though, and and like you said, I mean, you know, the, with using it on the Steemit platform, at the very least, you got the, you know, you're getting that positive feedback, and even if you get, you know, negative feedback, as long as it's constructive, it's not, you know. That's yeah, exactly. Usually, that's, exactly. And as you know, people are taking the t- that's that's great because that's the that's the more important thing, at least for any I would think for any writer at the beginning, any serious writer at least, or anybody who wants to be a serious writer, should I say, not mm-hmm. looking people who are just looking to make a quick buck on it, people that actually enjoy it like yourself, that are want you know if you 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 know the ultimate goal may be to make some money, but you know you understand that you're just trying to you know basically create a fan base, right? That's how you start out with these things. You're yeah you're putting that exactly. stuff out there and all in all these different avenues and hoping that you yeah. get uh you know some someone somewhere enjoys it enough to let me know yeah exactly and you, you've already you've already done that so there you go <laughs> you're well on your way my friend 
Um, but that's great though, because like I said, I I think that's a I had never really. I mean, I always talk about, and we all talk about, you know, whatever you know, whatever you're good at. That's Jeffrey Tucker's thing, right? Find the thing you're good at and uh, do it. <laughs> doesn't, right. doesn't necessarily right. if you can find a way to work liberty into that somehow, some way, and get get a message across while you're doing what you're doing. Great, but first and foremost, just find what you're good at and do that. Even if even if you have to suffer a little bit for your art or whatever it is in the beginning, that's kind of that's kind of part of it. But that's the that's the of way course. you're going to be the most successful, and that's the that's the easiest way to pass information. Once you're in a position where you're completely satisfied to a certain extent, you know, in so much as that you have the ultimate job or whatever it is for you. Because if you know, if it's something you really love to do, then that's got to be the ultimate job, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I think so. I, yeah. I certainly think so. Yeah, because I don't. I mean, me personally, I don't know if I thought I was there for a while. I mean, it's still. I have a really. I I I can't say it enough. I really do have a pretty sweet gig. I get paid to play with animals, man. I've been doing it for ten and a half years. <laughs> Are you going to be able to transfer your business no. to someone new when you move off? Oh, to so, to transfer my business. I could sell my client list, but I really don't want to do that. That just feels like I would obviously have to tell all my clients first. At the no, very, it's like at the very you could least. probably put an APB out in the group, you know, and say, hey, look, I, if somebody wants to come do this, I'll teach you how to do it for a month, and you can have the business. Here's yeah, but how it's, much it's, I not, it's, not, it's not that simple. I have to I have to go through my clients uh-huh. first. I have to get their permission to hand their numbers over yeah. to somebody else and yeah. say, hey, I'm leaving. Because I, I plan on just telling everybody I'm leaving and giving them enough notice to find new stuff on their own. I'm sure plenty of them right. will ask me for recommendations, which means I could. But I really don't know how I would go about that. I mean, I may end up selling off a couple of numbers that pe- of, pe- of clients that are totally willing for me to, they just want me to find the replacement because they want me to handpick them. And then I could probably sell them to a couple of the sitters that I know. But for me, it's just kind of, yeah, it's the way I set my business up and the way it was run, but the way it was run because there aren't any necessary necessarily laws and regulations for or against what I do here. As I was as I was told when I first started my business, first by my cousin who was the town clerk, and then the head of the zoning department actually told me the same exact thing uh, when they described what I do. It's you fall into this weird gray area that we don't really know what to do with right now. <laughs> huh? That's how. That's got to be the best response oh, ever. Uh, yes, and I wasn't complete. I had no idea what the ramifications of that of that you know that 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 conversation were way back then. You know, that was ten and a half years ago. I was still a hardcore neocon wanting to light the Middle East on fire guy. So I have no, you know <laughs> back then, but it you know in some ways it worked out great for me because I avoided a lot of the other BS that other people have to deal with in different industries around me and different you know people trying to do their own home businesses and stuff. Um, but on the other hand, it puts me in a position where I would have to. You know, except the, except pretty much whatever bid I could get for it, and it may not be the best situation for my clients. It's not. It, it just doesn't feel worth it to me. So I kind of screwed myself by not being able to pass it off easily. But whatever. I had a great run, man. Ten and a half years. It'll be at least eleven, eleven and a half before I finally shut my doors at this rate. And you know, like I said, in it, long hours sometimes, and a lot of extra stress at others. But on the whole, man, <laughs> you can't really complain. <laughs> I do anyway, because hey, that's what I do best, is complain. Yeah, I know. Well, that, that's like, that's absolutely right. But hey, you know, you enjoyed what you do. You loved what you did. I can't really ask for much more. Well, yeah. But, that, but the point of me, of me going onto that di- that uh, monologue for a little while <laughs> was the fact that I wanted to... Uh, I thought that's. I thought I had that. I thought I had that, you know, the, the do what you love. But I did for a while. But now it's like, now I want to do something else. And it may. This may you not. Mean this people's may people's wants and desires can change. Well, of course they. No. I, I didn't mean that. I meant like. I meant like. I don't know if that really was, <laughs> was the ultimate for silly. me. I know, but I. I don't know if that. I no longer know if that was the ultimate for me. You know, maybe this new farming venture will actually be. Yeah, you might hate farming. You never know. I. I don't. I don't think I could really hate farming. I've done enough of. Like I've been around it enough. At least when I was growing up. You know, when I was younger that you know i was i was closer to it and i saw it and i i I helped out in different situations and like and and the fact that i'm looking to go even more peaceful and just get the hell away from society more which has always been my goal in life get the hell out of new york city 
I'm not in the city. I know it was a joke. I know, but um, yeah, but still, it's not it's not any better where I am. I think there's like. I keep saying this, and I forget to look up the actual numbers, but I swear there's at least a million plus people here crammed in Nassau County, which is a lot of freaking people. And uh, yeah, it's a lot yeah, of people. That that sounds about right. Yeah, my neighbor, my neighbors are like, what, twenty five, thirty feet from my front door. <laughs> they're nice enough people in <laughs> <and> Albany. <laughs> they're I can I can reach actually I reach their property I think even less than that because they're you know it's pretty close so. You know. Mm. Well, well, if it's any consolation, I grew up in Orange County, California, so I I know exactly. But how at it least feels you had me. the motherfucking sun, dude. <laughs> you had you had much better weather than I have over here. That that's not enough. That is it's no, no, not it's, enough. it's not enough. But if if you're talking about you know two shitty places, at least you have that one perk. Okay, yeah, you know what, you're I, right. I'll we're not going to throw and we're not going to throw rocks in a glass house here. I I mean, I I grew up in not the best location in the world. So. Well, no, it's not it's not it's not it's not, it's not you were talking about like the oppressive laws of California and New York. Oh like, yeah, dude. There's no way I could live in either one. Well, that's I, what I'm I saying. You walk. you didn't have to deal with either of that. We at least we both. That's what we're comparing here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's uh, I mean, Andre actually, lives down in Alabama now, where the men, men right. and sheep are nervous. <laughs> 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 yeah, we'll see. Uh, I, I actually oh, I actually grew up most of the, most of my childhood and stuff was in PA, which is a little more lax, but. I've you know the bulk of my life now I've been here, which is just uh, so need to get out of this fucking place. Um, but yeah, so hopefully <laughs> the, the point of that is hopefully my my farming adventure will be the next thing. Well, I hope so too, man. I I hope that works out for you. I do. Yeah, me too. <laughs> working on it, working on it. E- either case, I got to be out of here in the next year. I already pretty much told my uh, my mother who's who's still on the deed of this house because I, I needed her credit line back way back when. <laughs> and yeah. I told her that I'm I'm out <laughs> come September whether she's whether she wants to help me sell it or not, and if she doesn't, then it's on her. And uh, I just want my money when she finally sells the house. So wow. Well, because I ha- I have to because I the the mortgage is yeah you know the my my interest rate goes variable, and uh, I am not Ooh, I am yeah. not I am not about to refinance and then try to sell the house like six months later like that's retarded. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> so that's why I said I want to either sell or just hand it over and I'll get my money when she finally sells because I know she won't be able to keep, hold on to it for very long before she wants to get rid of it. Even though I offered it, she could probably rent it out and and and, and do pretty well for herself. She could probably get the mortgage almost paid for if she split it up and rented it out. Yeah, that's what she should do. Yeah, but she doesn't want to be responsible for that. I already tried to run that by her. She doesn't want to be responsible for that. And, and knowing you can mother. hire a company that will take like just like twenty, thirty percent of the rent. Yeah. To top off the rent to no, manage it, and it's pretty simple. Yeah. I should tell you could hire that. the time traveler Trump. There you go. He would. Well, yeah, see, you could hire tr- time traveling Trump. Well, yeah. if I if I could hire tra- tra- time traveling Trump, I probably wouldn't be in the position I'm in right now. <laughs> You're right. Don't you think if I, I hired mean, him, I, I could just go love back to a entertain the thought that we all got Biff tainted by Trump. I just really do. See, I mean, well, I guess it also rolls off the tongue. The only <laughs> thing that tatted, scared me was the other day, he goes, the NSA has every one of Hillary's deleted emails. One day later, the NSA goes, we have every one of Hillary's deleted emails. <laughs> like, he just calls that, like, how did, unless someone told him that at the NSA. I, or, I, I just... Well, don't you think... I'm sorry, there's, there's I didn't a lot mean to of stuff. terrorist the attacks. I apologize. There's, no, no, it's there's all, all kinds of stuff. Look, I'm not trying to prove the point that, that Donald Trump is a time traveler. What I'm trying to say is, is I think we may have gotten Biff Tannen by a time traveling Trump, <laughs> and it's fun to entertain it, you know? It's fun to entertain it. <laughs> it's also fun to say time traveling Trump. Uh, this is true. It is, actually. Should we get some shirts made, time traveling Trump? Yes. Yeah, yes. you might even be able to. You might even be able to convince some of the crazy, crazier Trump supporters. I'm just to trying buy to think too. like a, an anarcho-capitalist here, trying to make some money. You know, that's right. We damn the poor, damn the weak, damn the old. It's all about money. Yep. Capital, fuck labor. Capital is the only thing that matters. <laughs> fuck <Yep>. labor. <laughs> uh, but where do you get the capital without the labor, Dave? I'm Listen. So confused. 
Capital is way better than labor. Always remember that. Okay. It really is. So, so what you're saying what would you is have a million I, dollars. So what you're saying is that things that I can do for myself, I should pay other people mm-hmm. to do. Or and robots, then, yeah. Yes. Or robots. Or robots. Let's well, that's why capital is increasingly meaning more than labor. It's because of robots. Well, listen, I, I'm all for the division of labor, but there are certain things that I can and will still do for myself, Dave. Thank you very much. Such as masturbate. That I do, <laughs> that you know that I may not turn. My he just pro- uses the the mattresses in his bedroom, the in between between. No, the two that that would be way too uncomfortable. I was going to say that I might not actually have a problem turning that job over to a robot. So <laughs> that's not what, <laughs> you know a little bit of strange. So there, um, that's not really a problem. You're just you're one of those crazy futurists. You know, back in my day, you had to do it all by hand. Of course, I say back in my day, you're actually older than I am. But yeah. you know. <laughs> Listen, listen, Sonny. I've been doing it by hand since before you were. Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> all right. This, this way, way off on a tangent. But anyway. Yeah. Anyways, thanks uh, for coming on the show, Andre. <laughs> it's, not, it's always a pleasure. I love being on here with you guys. I'll come we're on. Gonna, uh, we're gonna get we'll Jeremy out of here before we get real Doctor Drew and. Uh, no, it's all right, man. Hey, listen. Like I said, I'm more peaceful. Remember Doctor Drew in the Love Line. Oh yes. God, I love that show. Well, that was that was a funny show. That well, they, when him and Corolla were on together, that was great. Yes. It, yeah, you're right. Yes. <laughs> you know, he just got fired for talking out about Hillary. That's so funny. Who it's did? so funny. Doctor Drew. He just got fired from CNN for oh. questioning Hillary's health. I have I have no idea. I haven't paid attention to him or any. I don't pay it really. Like that's pay how it. bad they're censoring people right now. Like you can't even be like, yo, she might have a problem. Like might have a problem. Didn't didn't reports come out that she does have a problem? Yeah, yes. I thought she has Parkinson's. Yeah, that's I, what I heard. Yeah, I could have swore that was like an actual medical well, report. Well, I mean, that's that what Infowars reported. But oh, you know. I thought that like again. See, I haven't paid attention because I really don't care. Like I said, it, it, to me, I, I've said all along. I, I really I part mean, of you, me cares. Part of me doesn't care. I mean, because there's nothing you can individually do really about it. So, well, yeah. You know, I just. I make a lot of descriptive analysis about it. Just, you know, like, hey, this is my thoughts on the subject. Because, I mean, it's going to happen whether it's like watching a movie. Well, I know it's going to yeah, happen. That, that's 100% true. Well, yeah. But exactly. Because there's nothing you can do about it as an individual you can actually do about it. I, and, like, I, 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 what I was getting to is that, you know, you made the call that you, Trump's going to win. I still don't I still don't know because I haven't paid attention enough. And I, I still don't think it matters. I really, I really think the only reason Trump's there and can win is because the people that actually run everything really don't care which one actually gets in because they know they're going to get what they want no matter what. Because the the major the well, major yeah, policies, I mean, the major agenda will not change. The the no, minor nothing aesthetics. in American politics is going to change unless the Fed gets stopped and dismantled. Literally, nothing is going to change. But even then, like that would everyone would think that would be a correcting course for America. Uh, it's not going to be like it. Can't, it's not going to work. <laughs> it's it's always going to balloon into a problem every time. Well, as long so, as I mean, that's the Trump nature of the train the back on track. Government. There's there's really not anything you can do to, against it, which is the whole reason why. Like I was telling, like I was talking to Jeremy on New Year's. This is the whole reason why I became a uh, voluntarist was because you ca- finally come to the realization, like, oh, we need a small, restrained government. Well, yeah, that small, re- restrained government is going to do what all governments do and balloon into some horrible leviathan. That's just, that's the nature of things. Or get co-opted. You know, it's all, you know, the government's only one leader away from it being <laughs> completely tyrannical. And, you know, all these people that talk about, oh, you know, Obama's, you know, he's Hitler, he's going to declare martial law Literally and shut Hitler. down the whole world. Yeah, they're going to sit here and say, okay, yeah, look, all these all these executive orders that he was told to pass, those are some scary ones, even for Obama. But the, just the fact that they they're passing it means that they're going to say they're going to try to use the excuse for the tyranny as well. Look, we already passed it. You already agreed to all this. And exactly. People are Precedent. not going to swallow it. It's not it's both both sides of that is not going to work like it's going to be bad. Because if Trump gets in and tries to pull some of this NDAA crap, 
they're not going to like it. And if Hillary gets in there, they're not going to like it. Yeah, but they'll take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Battered wife syndrome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Stockholm syndrome is a hell of a drug. It really is. They'll, they'll complain, complain, complain. And then the, even the, the demarcation for revolt is usually when you can't be fed. And if you look today, Venezuela, August 1st, or I mean September 1st, Venezuela, the most people ever have marched on their capital demanding a new leader. Demanding a new leader. So they're starving. I don't see anything changing anywhere in the world until people start starving. Yeah, uh, that's actually pretty accurate. Yeah, sadly accurate. But, you know... I mean, the, the Romanian Revolution didn't happen until we had bread lines for days. So, there you go. That's uh, uh, from my own personal history, you know, stuff I was born into and grew up around. That's pretty much 100% true. It takes a yeah. lot. Yeah, and, and look what... Slaves won't revolt either. And and what's happened all those all those all these years later? They're not. I mean, it's not. There's not bread lines, but isn't it? Isn't it slipped back to more communist than anything else, or is it? Is, is it's not for well, central Arcane, banking it? has kind of ha allowed them to fleece and kind of prop themselves up, but central banking is failing miserably right now. Well, yeah, because you can only because manipulate all, all central the money does. so much until it is worthless, and then yeah. all of the tricks in the world can't help you. But yeah, I mean, they're more like a European, just like a uh, socialist boilerplate European socialist country. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So they, so they, so, so they made some progress. <laughs> a little bit. I mean, there's more free speech, but they don't have the secret police anymore, so that's nice. They got that going for them. This is true. Didn't I also hear? And wasn't it, maybe it was you, Dave? I heard it from somehow, some way that they actually have the fastest internet where did I, I heard this from somewhere that they actually have like the fastest internet in the world right now oh that was that was a um, post on facebook Japan or something that was a and, like and a meme or something romania i think i i, I could I, I think i've heard from from several different sources <laughs> that it was actually romania i think that's japan funny. like sets the soft standard like the like only certain parts i believe of romania had that problem but like i think like top to bottom like just for citizen if you want to call it access to the internet uh, Japan has the best from like the entire like anywhere you go basically today I was reading uh, that with Wi-Fi signals they can uh, uh, interpret the radio frequencies from your mouth and what you're saying and discern what you're saying up to tw uh, 97 percent accuracy just from the Wi-Fi signals in your uh, as long as it can receive the radio w waves that your your mouth is making essentially and also on keyboards uh, they know just from the hardware that's plugged into the computer, what frequency each key puts out so they can key log you 91% uh, accuracy uh, with just the Wi-Fi router in your house. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I mean, I'm not surprised. So, I don't know. I mean, it's all known that, you know, basically if you're walking around with a cell phone, you're walking around with a live mic to the NSA. If you're on Skype, you're on a, essentially live video. If you have Skype on your computer, you have basically live video for the NSA. And now, you know, the fact that, you know, people can hack Wi-Fi just like that means that the NSA can hack Wi-Fi just like that. So now you have this threat of there just being Wi-Fi in your area. Uh, you know, and if you go anywhere in downtown areas... Um, there's not yeah, a place that doesn't everywhere. have Wi-Fi. Everywhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's there's Wi-Fi coverage pretty much everywhere. So that means that they can echolocate and decipher what everyone in every place is saying, anything that has a Wi-Fi signal in it. Well, here's, here's the way I look at it. 99% of the government doesn't listen to the populace. However, the NSA does. So you can rest assured that at least somebody is listening to your problems. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> hey man, you can I air talk your grievances as, as loudly as I NSA. can about the things I care about uh, as wildly as possible. Even, you know, like wherever I want. On microphones, on, on my telephone, whatever. Look, I want NSA agents to hear this because once you hear it, you can't unhear it. I don't care what they do with their life after they hear it, but once you hear it, you can't unhear it. Just plain and simple. Well, I don't know about that. I know plenty of people that have heard it and been able to block it out for a while, myself included. Yeah, so. for a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you only hear it once, then you can block it out for good almost. It's not until you come across it again that it all... If you, ch if you get challenged a second time or a third time, that's when it starts to... <laughs>
Yeah. Well, that's why it's important for us to just keep putting out podcasts. They can't. They're going to have to listen to them eventually. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I like to think that there's a special agent uh, in the NSA that's, you know, looking over voluntarist and caps agorist all that the, you know online communities and just is like <laughs> has to like go home and watch status propaganda to uh <laughs> counteract <laughs> <laughs> they have to go home and like watch the you know the presidential inauguration and like the founding fathers videos <laughs> <laughs> they just they have they watch a uh, Patton on rerun <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Patton. On there you go <laughs> My- Kale's Navy. <laughs> that's yeah. Uh, oh, that's oh yeah. Go 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 home and watch Mash. These damn man caps are fucking brain up. Well, actually, neither neither of those are actually shining examples of the U.S. Army. <laughs> or Navy. no, they're not. But it's still status propaganda the whole time, normalizing war. Yeah, this is true. So. Oh no, Black Hawk down. There we go. That's. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Black Hawk Down. Yeah. Gonna go home and rub one out to Black Hawk Down. <laughs> or or American Sniper. Oh, there <laughs> it is. Yeah. I think that's the Jesus. new. I think that's the Bradley new. Bradley Cooper does movie. have a pretty mouth. Oh. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> On that <All> right. note, <laughs> I think we will get. It was a joke, guys. It was a joke. Whatever you get, whatever helps you sleep at night, buddy. Yeah. But uh, as I was saying, on that note, <laughs> I think. I think we should get wrapping up for the night, but uh, I want to first thank Andre for coming on. This is, uh, as always, it's been great to talk to you, man. I, uh, I'm glad you had the time available, and uh, this it's, has been fun. It's been a phenomenal pleasure. Ed. Like I said, anytime you guys will have me on here, I am more than happy to make time because I, lo- I love talking about this stuff with you guys. It's great to, to finally be able to put my voice out there. Yeah, man. Well, as, as Dave and I were talking about before the show, you know, Danilo has been out for quite a while now, and he doesn't seem too interested in getting done what he needs to get done to come back. So, we've I've kind of just I, I joked earlier that I made a unilateral decision on just vacating his seat, and we're just gonna keep bringing different people in, and when he finally is ready to come back, he can join the rotation, and I'll consider giving him his job back. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> only if he begs. We miss nicely. you, Danilo. But for come the back. for the for the time being, we do have a we do have a permanent open slot so uh I'd, I'd be more than happy to have it filled on a regular basis with a couple of people yourself included so uh so we don't i don't have to go we don't have to go scrambling all the time to find one more one more person just in case well and, you know, and no one wants to hear me and jeremy do you know just a me and jeremy show no, that's and not gonna yelling work. and arguing with yeah no i'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't even listen i wouldn't even listen to that crap uh, <laughs> <laughs> It might be entertaining. It's it's bound to happen. I know I would find it entertaining. I so you'd have at least one viewer. <laughs> I well I do I think I think I do have a couple of behind the scenes ones that's where it's just me and Dave for like half an hour that I've recorded uh that uh, I have stored somewhere. Maybe I'll put those out eventually. <laughs> it's like a highlight yeah, reel. It's blackmail. Like the blooper reel there. There you oh, go. Oh, please. B- uh, blackmail. I think I have that on, on, well, on all of us multiple times and a bunch of our guests too. <laughs> <laughs> so, some things that were said before shows. <laughs> yeah. Um, but luckily for them and, and all of us, I'm, I'm not that kind of guy. So... Because, well, mainly because I know Dave has most of the same information, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, don't throw rocks in it. <laughs> so, Dave, anything else before we get closing out, man? Uh, check out us. Check us out on C- uh, Seize Liberty on Patreon. Uh, One dollar a month. If you're a avid listener of the show, uh, really like what we're doing. We're trying to get more shows out on the network to uh, you know up our RSS feed capabilities you know of hosting content so one dollar a month helps us out tremendously in uh you know advancing towards that goal of having five days a week uh shows coming out on our rss feed for you to listen to that uh you know you might agree with a lot or disagree with a lot or find entertaining because we might have some new shows coming in soon stay tuned yeah and a new website tm soon (laughs) <laughs> Hashtag soon. Oh, please, not with that website. Soon, again. soon. We've been hearing about the soon. website Trade soon more. for months now. <laughs> All right. Oh, anyway, it's gonna happen. All right. Well. So, for the time being, you can go see our, our old crappy website where you can find all of our information and uh, where, all, where we can found, be found elsewhere at theseedsofliberty.com. 
Um, so this has been the Seas of Liberty podcast. We will catch you next time. Peace. Right. Peace, guys. Peace. self-hatred onto us. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows use or modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org.